So I have a series on this channel that I have cleverly called WTF is that distro and I ask that question quite often because there are a literal crap ton of Linux distros out there and a lot of them make absolutely no sense to me and I have no clue why they exist or what they do that are that is special and I want to know like I'm very deeply curious as to why people create these distributions so Today we're going to be taking a look at a distribution called Spiral Linux. Now Spiral Linux is a distribution based on Debian and it is one of many distributions based on Debian. So I have to ask the question, WTF is this distro, but also why does this thing exist? So let me show you what Spiral Linux looks like. So this right here is Spiral Linux, and we are recording live from the ISA, or the live environment. Now, you might be asking, Matt, didn't you promise that you're going to do all your reviews from hardware from now on? Well, yes, I did do that. And see, I've spent the last two hours trying to get this to install on hardware, and I have been completely unsuccessful. Now, I don't blame Spiral Linux for that. I blame Calamari's because when I go up here to click on Spiral Linux and I get this thing here, this spinny waiting sign and it just goes on and on and on and on. And so much so that I will actually show you a screenshot from the last time I tried this. If I can open up a terminal or a file manager on the appropriate screen, appropriate screen here. So if you probably, good lord. I hate that plasma. Good lord, open up on the right monitor. Anyways, you can see here, 2613 seconds it was spinning around, and it went for another thousand seconds after that, before it finally moved me past to the next section of the installer. And normal, that's actually fairly normal for Calamari's. It, what it's doing here is it's scanning all of my external hard drives and I have two external hard drives one of them is a 14 terabyte one of them is a 20 terabyte and it has to scan both of them I don't know why it has to do that it doesn't have to do that it seriously does not have to do that like it's really dumb that it does that but that's not a spiral Linux problem that's a calamari's issue it just that's what it does I had no problem with that like okay so I do have a problem with that I don't want to wait that long to install Linux but whatever okay if I really cared that much I would just unplug the external hard drives and then install my Linux and then plug them back in the problem came is when I went into the partition manager part of the Calamari's installer and switched to the appropriate job drive where I would be installing this it started scanning all the damn hard drives again and I'm an impatient person so I really did not want to do that so I stopped it and it did not want me to continue because it obviously wanted to scan all the hard drives again for absolutely no freaking reason. So, yeah, the bottom line here is that, yeah, it's not getting installed on my hard drive. So we're, we're going to do this video from the live environment. That's as good as it's going to get. So anyways, so what is Spiral Linux? Like I said, it's based on Debian. And if you do manage to get through the install, which I'll probably show you a little bit of the install on a VM because I did take some B-roll of that. It's basically just a standard Calamari's installer. You're probably going to get about five seconds of that B-roll because you really don't need to watch the rest of it. It's just a standard Calamari's installer. So there's nothing truly unique about the installer itself. Now, so Spiral Linux does come with several different desktop environments for you to choose from. You can choose from Cinnamon, XFCE, Gnome, Plasma, Mate, Budgie, LXQt, and you can also use their builder, which I assume would allow you to basically build Debian from the ground up. I downloaded the Plasma version, as you can tell. It's just kind of the one that I usually download. The I always usually go for the Plasma one. So those are the options you have upon downloading. So what actually is Spiral and what is their goals? So when someone takes Debian and tries to make it easier to install, there are several distributions out there that try to do that. Usually they end up making their own repositories and stuff like that so if for example mx linux has their own repos and stuff like that if M the developers behind mx linux decided to stop developing it those repositories would be abandoned and the distribution would be basically broken i mean you could still use the debian stuff but it wouldn't be the same right the goal behind spiral linux is to completely rely on everything that debian 
provides while simultaneously creating an experience for new users that is slightly easier to install. So you get the Calamari's installer, you get a pre-designed and pre-set up environment for you to work with once you install, and that is its primary goal. You also don't have to search for the ISO that hard, which is also a great thing compared to Debian. Another great thing, if you were to actually be able to install Spiral, which most people probably will, they won't have my problems. By default, Spiral includes a butter sub-volume layout with a ZSTD transparent compression. So basically all what that means for you is that it uses ButterFS as the file system. And that means that you're going to have access to snapshots either through zipper or time shift. And it means that you're going to be able to easily reverse changes to your system using those snapshots. So that's something that you're not going to get at least easily with something like ext4 which is still kind of the default for Linux. One thing I will talk about before we leave and that's just kind of to reiterate what I talked about before is that they actually answered the question why I created another Debian based distro. So a lot of times when I do these videos, I ask this exact same question. Why did you create another Arch-based distro? Why is there another Debian-based distro? Why are you doing this? Why, 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 right? This is the question because Debian is Debian. You're not going to find anything special on any of these distros really unless they've created a set of tools or something like MX Linux has or they have their own special repos that include newer software choices. Those things can make a distribution special, but they have to put that effort in and a lot of Debian based distributions don't make that kind of effort. So with Spiral Linux, they are trying to avoid the pitfall of relying too much on their own repos and instead have relied solely on the Debian stuff, which is stuff that you can read right here in this paragraph here. So let's talk a little bit about the pre-installed applications. We'll just run through these real quick. You get Gwenview, Color Paint, LibreOffice, and Ocular, all that stuff here. Most of this stuff is going to be just the case suite of applications. So for internet, we have Firefox ESR, which is what you get if you install Debian. That distribution pretty much primarily relies on the ESR version of Firefox. Pigeon is here, Thunderbird for email, Transmission for BitTorrent, Multimedia, Audacity, and OBS were things that I installed. Both of those are flat packs. I should mention that FlatHub is enabled by default, so you don't have to do that, which is really nice. Clementine and VLC, so you have a media, uh, music player and a video player. Office, LibreOffice is here. Settings, so they ha do have a few things that they've installed. So Grub Customizer is here. The Synaptic Package Manager is here if you are into installing dev packages and things like that and you don't want to mess around with Discover. The Wacom Tablet Finder is also here. That's very specific. I'm not sure why they've installed that, but again, it's not anything that's bad. Other than that, they have a few KDE-specific applications. So things like K, KCal, KThine, things like that are installed. So this is not a bloated distro by any means. It just has the basics. I think the ISA was around 2.2 gigabytes or something like that. Don't quote me on that. I don't really, I just vaguely remember seeing that number. So I know it wasn't extraordinarily high. In terms of theming, they have, I believe been they're using the Numix theme here. Although they're calling this Breeze, but I'm going to tell you right now that this is not Breeze. Okay, it's just, it is not Breeze. Breeze is like a bluish color. This is very much a, like a Grovebox brown color. So I was right. This is the Numix Plasma style. It, they did not include the Numix global theme for whatever reason. So they're actually, they actually are using the Breeze icon pack. So none of the extra stuff that would come with a global theme. So that is for the theming. I can show you the resource usage if you want, but I don't think that it's going to do much for you because I do, am recording this on this hardware right now. So you're, you're going to see that we're using about 3,600 megs of RAM and that includes OBS, Audacity, and um, the terminal at this point. I'm pretty sure I also have opened up Firefox in this section. So take this for how you will. Another thing that they've done that's slightly interesting, I suppose, is that they've made it so that there's this weird view inside of Dolphin. By default, I'm not sure why they've changed the default view in Dolphin, but they have. It's just something that I noticed. They also have linked to the expose option for KDE here in the panel, which is nice. If you have multiple windows open, 
it will do the whole Mac OS style expose thing, which is very nice. I know that that was included in the KDE several versions back, but I don't think I've ever actually used it before. So if we look at some of the versions that are installed, this includes the kernel 5.10, which is basically what you get if you install Debian. It includes bash 5.1. This is plasma 5.20.5. And that's going to be the place where this would seriously bug me because that is quite old at this point. Like, I'm pretty sure they're on like version 5.25 at this point. So we're quite a few versions away from all of the cool plasma stuff that they have included in the last few versions. So that is definitely something that you're going to want to kind of keep in mind if you're going to install this. And really, that's the bottom line. If you're going to install this, know that you're getting Debian. Like, it says Debian right there. It doesn't even say Spiral Linux or anything like that. This is as close to Debian as you're going to get. And that's really the point of this distribution. They were aiming to actually ship you Debian. That's what they're aiming to do. And that is what they have done. This is Debian stable. And... There is going to be an expe expectation that you're perfectly fine with using software that is a little bit behind where you, you would get something a little bit more fresh on something like Fedora or obviously Arch is going to be much further ahead than this. So if you are interested in Debian, but you're not interested in learning how to install Debian like from a, one of their many different installers, this is a possibility for you because this does use the Calamari's installer and it is very easy to install. Also, using ButterFS on actual Debian is kind of a rigmarole, if you're, especially if you use their standard ISO. So by using Spiral Linux, you can get the benefits of ButterFS without having to jump through those hoops, which is really nice. Probably my favorite part of this whole thing is that FlatHub was enabled by default. That's not something that you see very often on distributions these days. And I really like that. Now, a lot of distributions will include Flatpak, but you usually have to either install FlatHub or you have to enable it or something. That means you have a broad selection of up-to-date software, things like the brand new version of OBS is here. The things like the brand new version of Audacity is here. Those are nice things to have when you know that the versions that you'll find in the Debian repos are probably pretty old and definitely don't have the new shiny features that you might enjoy in newer versions. So basically this is Debian with FlatHub installed, or in Flatpak installed obviously. So we can take a brief look at some of the wallpapers that they've included. So we can take a look at this. And as you can see, there's not a lot of wallpapers here. So they have two different versions of this green background and they have the standard KDE 5.20 wallpaper that came with the with this version of KDE. That's literally it in terms of wallpapers. That's a bit disappointing. Doesn't show much effort there, but whatever. I mean, you can't really judge people on wallpapers. Right? I mean, I suppose I can because they do, but uh, I won't judge them too hard. So as is usual with a KDE Plasma setup, this does include Discover as the primary software store. And Discover has gotten way better over the last few years. I've had many problems with Discover over the last couple of years, but it has gotten better. So if you click on an application, you do get access to screenshots, which you didn't used to get. There's a nice description of the application. There are reviews. You can choose from different sources. So you can choose between the dev package and the flat pack, which is really nice. And obviously, you can also do all of your updates from Discover. So this is definitely an improvement over how Discover used to be. So that is also really nice. Now, obviously, that has very little to do with Spiral Linux itself because this is still using an older version of Discover than what you get in something that is a more up-to-date distribution. But again, you go in to Debian knowing that. So I should stop poo-pooing it because it's just kind of obvious at this point. So that is Spiral a very very brief look at spiral linux i probably could have gone a little bit more in depth but it's like four o'clock in the morning i've been working on this video for three hours and i just seriously want to kind of phone it in for the rest of the night so uh there are some final thoughts that i have about this so there is nothing about this distribution i would say that it makes it really all that special in my opinion 
yes, it is more reliant on Debian than most other Debian-based distros. So if the developer decides they're not going to develop it anymore, you're still going to be perfectly okay because you're on Debian. All you have to do is update your system. All of your updates are being pulled from the Debian repos, and you don't have to be reliant on anybody else to maintain their repositories, which is a nice sentiment, and maybe it shows a little bit of fatalism that they expect someday to stop developing their distribution and forcing people just to rely on Debian repositories, but whether or not that ends up happening or not, who can say? But other than that, there's not a lot here that differentiates it, Itself from any other Debian based distribution. There are no really special tools that are here. They've not done all that much in terms of customization of look and feel of the desktop. I mean, it just looks like a standard KD desktop with a Numix theme, so it's not anything bad. Now, all this stuff said, it doesn't mean that Spiral Linux is bad, right? I don't want to go in uh, end this video saying that this distribution is bad and that you shouldn't use it. That's not the case. I'm sure it's perfectly fine if you install it on hardware, you're going to be happy because you're just using Debian. So Debian is great. It's stable. It's going to have access to a lot of software. So most people will probably be very, very happy with Debian or with Spiral Linux in this case, right? But it's going to have the typical pitfalls that Debian has. So it's going to have older software. It's going to have less hardware support than you would expect on something that uses a newer kernel. So it's going to have some of those things that kind of Debian also has, right? It's going to have the same issues and that's going to be something that's going to play into your decision over whether or not you can use this thing. So if you have brand new spanking hardware, you're going to want something that has a newer kernel and has better hardware support. But if you have older hardware or you aren't quite worried about that kind of stuff, Debian is a fantastic distribution and Spiral Linux does improve on the install process. So that is a good thing. So if you're interested in Spiral Linux and you have comments on it, you can leave those comments in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all amazing people. The channel would just not be anywhere near where it is right now without your, your support. So thank you so very much. We just reached 20,000, which is an amazing accomplishment for just two years in the YouTube business. So thanks to everybody for watching all of my videos and this video. I'll see you next time.